the oral thing on McDowell line, historic line way back. Mm -hmm. Kim Clark came in. Right. Recorded me at the library, and I read those letters over that. And then I did a presentation at the museum, which is, uh, I'm involved with the museum now. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So, um, keep it busy. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's yeah. a good thing. I just yeah. can't get around this like I'd like to. My mind says you can, but the rest of me doesn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me um, back up. Was Woody, and was it the Woodies that um, were the original owners of the property? Who was who was the original owner of the property that you, that your family has? On Curtis Creek, um, Silvers. Oh, oh well. Yeah, yeah because the up in there. Mm -hmm. and uh, but my grand pesters, pesters. My grandparents are from Yancey County. Oh, Toll River my Valley. grandparents are from Yancey County. <laughs> Toll River Valley, and in those heritage books, there's a lot, a lot of information about them. And uh, his name was Greenberry Woody. And uh, his father was Greenberry Silver. And Greenberry Silver was a great landowner. Mm -hmm. And when Greenberry Woody got married, Catherine Keziah Phillips was who he married. He gave him Green Mountain, which is a little further up. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then when my grandfather and his 13 children <laughs> Decided to buy some property, <clears throat> they bought it on Curses Creek. And it was 82 acres to start with, and he sold the Farnsworth uh, portion of it at the lower end to finish paying for the rest of it. So, um, and each, when they drew lots, 13 families drew lots, each one got 4.6 acres what was left of the property. So you said when you were young, you lived on Curtis Creek. It's I was like two. Two. Oh, so let's see how much you remember then. Uh, so did you, you were just there when you were tiny and then you went off to, was they, it? They moved to Michigan because there okay. was no jobs here. My dad worked mm -hmm. for the CCs and <sighs> Yeah, and I had, oh. I gave that, I had that uh, photo album I gave to the museum mm -hmm. that Mom had of all the CC, yeah. CCs. And that's how they met. Oh, really? Him going up there, and I think Mom would go and help, like cook or cook, something. Or cook with her, her aunt, and the big house on Curses Creek, the big white house. That's where I was born. Oh, really? And that's the Woody home place. And uh, they have it in the museum on their display. Mm -hmm. So um, it's you know it's still being cared for. My cousin Wanda mm -hmm. uh, got that. So well, where I was headed was um, you know there used to be a schoolhouse on Curtis Creek, and I wondered like we were talking about his home places or the, his family's home places and. He kind of knows where two places where they might have been, but are no more. Um, but do you do you know the building's not there anymore? No, the building now um, is on it's on an acre in between two Woody um, property. Woody uh, heirs on on both sides of it, and the schoolhouse was built for the kids on the creek. Right. And I've got pictures of those classes. Mm -hmm. Mom and her brothers and all of them went there. Now, Mom was three years old when they moved, 1909. She was born in 1909, and they moved in 1912. Mm -hmm. So um, they, her and her old brothers and sisters went to that little schoolhouse. And uh, so, um, Tim Revis now lives, and they 
I don't know if the little schoolhouse was torn down or what, but there's a big two-story brick house there where it was. Oh. So. But it's still kind of nice to know, yeah. even though the, the building's not there, to know the location. Yeah, it was just on that acre that was cut out on the last 14th plot mm -hmm. of that property to build that schoolhouse. And my uncle used to tell some of the funniest stories about that schoolhouse and them going to school there, you know. And uh, of course he was a great storyteller, so. But um, yeah, they all went there up to the eighth grade. And mom said some of her stories that she's told um, is that when it comes to the end of school year, that most of them would be very sad and some of them cry because they knew what was ahead. Oh, just work. Work, work. <laughs> they went to school and enjoyed it because they didn't have to get up and go to work. Yeah. Well, because um, in certain times, um, if you were if if you were old enough, um, which old enough was probably five or five, six, five. <laughs> yeah, then you there were lots of tasks associated with uh, taking care of the home, taking care of the property, um, and the garden type yeah, of thing. Yeah. I know Mom's told she had a twin brother, and uh, she said when they were about five or six years old, she said I remember. Pa, she called him Pa, waking us up in the morning, telling us to get dressed and go eat a biscuit and take the toe sacks and go up Chestnut Wood Mountain and pick up chestnuts. And do not come home until you have the bags full. Oh my goodness. And she said, we did it. We knew not to come home unless we had those bags and full. Oh my goodness, just pause there. Now can you time? Uh, uh, you take all of your kids and they are five, seven, yeah. and nine, and you give them toe sacks and you say, head off up that mountain and don't come home. And snakes and bears. I and know. Coyotes and whatever. DSS would have you in the courthouse before you turn around. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> But it was, it was a different yeah. time. Well, yeah. see, all of her brothers, uh, which there was four, five of them, four of them were older. Mm -hmm. And when they went to Michigan to work, when there was no work here, and Mom said, Pa always feared they'd get put in jail for moonshine. <laughs> so he, he made it so before he passed away, he did pass away young. He was 60-something. He died of blood poisoning because he was a blacksmith. Now that's another story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but he got blood poisoning from a cut and uh, passed away. But the boys went up there to find work. And they did and they stayed. And uh, they all did very well. They worked for the county. And I had one uncle who was a general contractor for a construction company. And he built half Detroit Zoo, so they did very well. Well, I'm thinking that maybe not everybody, but a large number of people, uh, when they move from place to place, um, were trying to find um, yeah. work. Yeah. I mean, they were just trying to make a living. Yeah. And if it was tough where they were, then they were searching and trying to find a place that they could raise their family, and right. have some livelihood. Well, um, back when the tannery was here, um, my grandfather, G.B. Woody Jr., mom's dad, him and the boys that were big enough and at home, cut the logs that went down the flume. Oh, to up the on end. Curtis Creek, yeah, right? On Curtis Creek, yeah. So uh, they made good there, but then when the tannery Burnt. Burnt, mm -hmm. and there was no jobs there. The only way they could make any money was go to the woods, you know. And yeah. So, and they were, you know, they were timbermen in that, but there was not a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it was like, mm -hmm. so, yeah, they, they, right on up, yeah.
But before my grandfather and the family moved over here, he was high sheriff of Yancey County. Oh. And uh, <clears throat> what was his name again? Greenberry. Yeah, Green that. Uh, Jr. That's the one. I, it's a. It's a complicated yeah. name. I don't know why I can't remember. Well, it. it was spelled a couple of different ways in my research. It was one word, Greenberry, and then it ended up being two words, Greenberry, in the Heritage Book. So, uh, and I went on um, online, and I did find his death certificate, and it was two words. Yeah. So anyway. Um, she kept it all. She wrote. She wrote for the for the um, Old Fort Bulletin. She would send pictures, and it was a little column they called "Out of the Past" or something like that. Oh. And she would send mm -hmm. pictures that related to things being done on Curses Creek and history. So I have I have a bunch of that that she she did. Which gave me a lot of information about where to find stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's a little treasure trove. And Binky was my good friend uh, at the paper. Her and I worked together, and uh, she knew Mom. And of course, uh, she had stories too. <laughs>